So that is pretty simple, but how about we step up our game and you know, kind of build something a bit more, let me say, app-like. So you know a cat command, Unix cat command? What it does is, for example, if I cat welcome.ts, it is going to just print everything that is inside this file. You see, so if the cat command takes an argument, that argument is actually the file name, and it prints out all the output for that file. How about we go ahead and hook this thing up? So I'm going to be writing a cat ts. So the first thing I'm looking for is if I can introduce some, you know, Dino arguments here. For example, if I run Dino run cat.ts and then give it an argument of welcome.ts, how do I really access it? From the documentation, I was able to pick up that you have to write dino.args. So dino.arguments, let's console log to see what happens there. So it just went ahead and compiled it. And the dino.args is actually an array. And inside an array, there are strings, which are the names of all the arguments. For example, if I give it another argument, which is the cat.ts file itself, it will have two strings, welcome.ts and cat.ts. So that makes our job easy. How about we start doing something with it? I'm going to write a regular for loop here. For loop where there will be let i is equal to zero. So we will start the iterator from zero. And i will be less than dino.args dot length and just iterate over this particular thing. For example, what we are doing is we are taking in the array length, which is going to be whatever you the number of uh, you know arguments you send to this program. And this for loop is going to iterate over that number of arguments only that number of time. For example, if there are two arguments, this loop is going to run twice. So now we know that there's a file name as a string. This is actually the file name. And now I'm going to define a file. I'm going to await and use a function called dino.open that particular file name. So here I'm using dino.open to open this particular file. And I'm kind of saving it as a reference in the file variable. Did you notice I'm using await and there is like no async function here? This is because Dino is capable of using await as a top level await API. You don't really have to define an async function to use await in Dino, which is excellent. You know, it is like a top, new top level API in the you know modern JavaScript and Dino is making use of it. So now that we have our file, what we need to do is we need to copy this file to our standard output, just like a cat does. So I'm going to await Dino copy and the source will be the file and the output will be on Dino standard out. See how this is all working and I'm getting all the completions and suggestions here. This is because Dino uh, is built with TypeScript and this uh, VS Code extension integrates it really well with our VS Code editor. So there you go. As you can see, the copy command is going to use the source and destination writer. Uh, it copies anything from source to destination. And our destination happens to be the standard output of our you know, terminal, wherever we are going to be running this. And finally, I'm going to close this file because I don't really need it. So what's happening here is we are looping over all of our arguments. For each argument, we define the file name. We open that file name here, call it file, and then we use this as a source to output all of the contents of this file, and then go ahead and close the stream. So how about we go ahead and run dino run cat.ts, which is actually this particular file, and I'm sending it the argument of welcome.ts. Uh oh. Looks like we have an error. So what happened is it compiled successfully, but there is an uncaught permission denied. So the read access to welcome.ts is denied because it is asking us to actually explicitly define the allowed read flag so it can read this particular file. And I'm going to just go ahead and do that. This is actually where Node.js and Dino are different. Dino is 
sort of secure by default and you have to actually allow its particular sandbox to a certain set of conditions that it can use uh, going forward. So what we are going to do is we are going to define. So I'm going to write allow read access right after the run. And there you go. It, it's, it's actually able to now kind of print in the entire contents of this welcome.ts file. And for example, if I were to give it cat.ts as well, it will go ahead, print the welcome.ts contents and then the contents of cat.ts. So that is working really good. 